Um, so just to let everybody know what the plan is, um, we'll give a presentation that provides information about the bond vote and projects we're proposing. Um, we'll do a question and answer session where you guys can ask whatever questions you have, and then um, whoever would like to join us, we can walk to the various parts of the school that will be affected by the project. So we'll go down to the music room and the um, shop area and the back entrance and the um, gym area to look at where we're talking about modifying on this campus and, and why we might need to do that and kind of be able to visualize what we're talking about doing. So um, that's the plan for today. Um, you know, since there's not many people, we're going to be having the presentation on this screen here. If you guys want to move forward, you know, to be able to see better, feel free. Um, as well, those chairs in the front row still available. Why doesn't um, anybody want to sit in the front row? <laughs> you know, it's not always so way. Yeah. All right. Um, can we uh, bring up the slideshow? Uh, we'll start with just introductions um, of all the people up here. So I'm Andrew Jones. I'm the chair of the school board. I'm Nancy Pejui. I am a representative from Bethel. Julie Hemming from Bethel as well. Ed Sullivan, Royalton. Peggy Ainsworth, Royalton. Uh, Jamie Canary, Superintendent of Schools. Hi, I'm Pierre Laflam. I'm the principal over at Library Valley Middle School. Jeff Thomas, high school principal. Tara Weatherow, business manager. All right. Um, so uh, we'll start out with just a slide that kind of has the, the kind of most important takeaways that we want you guys to have from the meeting today. So um, we're asking for you guys' support for a bond vote um, that we think will be uh, important for making critical building improvements for our school. Um, we are, will be making changes to uh, increase school safety through secure school entrances, increasing the um, ventilation and air quality in our buildings and providing larger spaces to make them more um, safe than the fire codes. Um, we'd be enhancing learning by providing, um, working, uh, sorry, doing the Performing Arts Center or Performing Arts Wing that will help um, bolster our music department, both at the high school and elementary level. We're expanding the tech shop to help with students who wanna um, do that kind of hands-on learning that really helps students learn and um, this would also be a benefit for our community you know these schools are our heart are the heart of our, our towns and investing in the schools um, provides benefits for everybody um, we're looking to do 6.8 million dollars of um, total the total project cost um, but we only need to borrow 3.8 million of that since we have um, other funding sources as well um, what that means for for you, the voter, or the taxpayer, um, for the average property in Royalton, which is or Bethel, which is um, two hundred thousand um, dollars, is it's slightly under two hundred thousand dollars for the average um, homestead in, in Royalton and Bethel. Um, this would cost less than fifty dollars um, average um, for an annual tax bill. Um, for lower income voters who qualify for the Vermont um, property tax credit, uh, this would be even, even less. So for somebody earning less than um, $40,000 a year, the uh, added taxes would be less than $15 uh, a year. All right. um, so why are we looking to do this uh, project now? Um, we've you know, had these buildings in place for a long time and been educating students in them for a long time. So why is there all of a sudden a need for this now? Um, it's mostly uh, due to enrollment being up. Uh, this is really good news for our schools that we have more students in our schools than we have in the past. Um, even at the peak of, of student numbers, uh, back before student numbers started declining um, at the beginning of the century. So. South Royalton High School, before the merger, um, enrollment peaked in 2003 at 208 students. And our current enrollment of 231 is 10% higher than it ever was uh, before the merger. So um, when we did the merger, we took some of the, you know, the middle school students all went to Bethel, which opens up classroom space for our high schoolers, uh, the added high schoolers. Um, but we have, you know, dedicated rooms like music room in the shop area, which, um, you know, are, are getting too crowded. Um, so we need to uh, provide more space for that. Um, you know, those, those, we didn't get any extra space by moving people in the school. 
Um, the other thing is when we, you know, we've identified some safety issues, including ventilation in this room, and um, you know, there's different expectations for safety for schools these days uh, as times have changed. Um, so when you kind of know about a deficiency in, in, in safety, that's something we should address as soon as we can and not wait until something happens that, that uh, could have been prevented. Um, this is also an investment for our future. You know, investing in our schools shows other communities that we care about education and, and will hopefully draw, um, make, when we invest in our, our schools and show that we care, then other, stu other communities are more likely to send their kids to be educated with us. And that really helps our school maintain and be a vibrant place and also helps with um, bringing in revenue for um, either investing, reinvesting in our schools or um, lowering taxes for our community. Um, and we also have some regulation requirements that we need to meet. Um, and that's part of this project will be done regardless to um, we're looking to do all these together um, because doing them together will save money as opposed to, you know, if we did some of it now and then tried to do some of it later, um, you know, there's, there's aspects of it that doing it together will make it cheaper in the long run. So just to talk about in more detail about what each of the um, aspects of the project are going to be. Um, and why we think that these are necessary. Um, the first thing we'll talk about is secure entrances for our schools. Um, so the Bethel Middle School and the um, <coughs> rear entrance on the Royalton campus do not meet uh, recommended school safety standards. Um, you know, in the ideal situation, you have the ability to have people enter into the school um, through one set of locked doors, enter into a vestibule, secure vestibule, and then after staff has, has verified you know, who they are and, and what they're there for, then they can be buzzed into the rest of the school. And our um, Bethel Middle School campus just has a single entrance door into the main part of the room or pair of the building. Once you're in, you're in. Um, so that's one thing that needs to be addressed. And the rear entrance on the Royalton campus is the main entrance that everybody who comes and parks in that back um, parking lot uses at the beginning of the day and um, and is also you know used um, by people other times as well and that's also just a single set of doors um, in addition that rear entrance um, is frequently used for after school um, events and activities um, and it's you know one of the primary things that people coming from other communities will see when they come to join us for um, play our, our rec teams in basketball or um, come to a um, a drama production or or band performance. Um, anything that's happening in that small gym, everybody's going to be entering through these doors, and if that's their primary mode of of seeing our school. When it comes time to choose where they want to go, this isn't showing off our school kind of to a, the best of ability. So you know, that entrance is not very obvious or welcome. Um, in addition, it's just a single set of double doors. And for the number of people that we have in that high school wing, we should have um, a double set of double doors um, according to uh, fire code. So you know, right now it's grandfathered in, but it is something we should change. So um, what we're planning on doing is making it so that both the um, White River Valley Middle School uh, campus on the Bethel um, campus and the rear entrance on um, the Royalty campus have secure vestibules where we can have visitors enter, be able to see who they are, and then buzz them through the second set of um, locked doors in order to access the facility. Um, there will be video cameras, particularly for the rear entrance and the high school entrance. You know, right now we don't really have any visibility to who's coming in that direction. So now having the video cameras there will allow um, the front um, desk staff to be able to see who's there and buzz them in if it's appropriate. 
Um, there'll be remote locks on the doors to do that. Um, and we're also going to be adding for that um, high school entrance, a uh, new lobby space and bathrooms. Um, again, that's where everybody comes in to go to um, all the events that happen in the small gym. So, you know, having that lobby space and um, extra bathrooms will help anytime that we have performances or town meeting or other community events. Um, it's also a place that students frequently are waiting to be picked up from. So it'll also provide a, a place for our high school students to you know, wait more comfortably rather than just sitting down on the floor of a hallway. Um, the cost of the secure entrances would be, uh, for both campuses, would be $1,368,000 with, um, we've applied for up to $600,000 in grant funds and we'll find out in March um, what's happening with those, but we're optimistic that we'll get you know, a fair amount of that um, since we had a pretty strong proposal and, and uh, application. So the next slide will um, see a, uh, a rendering of what that rear entrance would look like um, after the project was completed. Um, and you can see that it's much more visually appealing and, and would be much more welcoming for people coming into our building and, and show off our school to um, you know, much, much better than what we currently are doing. Um, on the Bethel campus, next slide. Um, what we'd be looking to do is um, there, the current doors would stay as the doors that you enter to access the school. There would be adding a vestibule onto the front of that where there'd be um, doors that you'd enter via a vestibule, be able to check into uh, the window with the front office to um, check in, and then they'd be able to buzz through to the rest of the campus. Um, on the elementary side in Bethel, um, that entrance already has a vestibule, but it hasn't been used in a, a particularly secure manner in that the entrances off of it frequently aren't locked and there has been things put into that space that um, need to be accessed during the day. So we would be keeping that same layout on the elementary side in Bethel but um, reconfiguring how it's used so that the interior doors are locked from it so that um, that can be used as a secure vestibule as well. Um, there'd be new hardware for that to provide key card access, remote box and video camera um, for that entrance. And there would also be some um, hardware for the um, a rear entrance on Bethel to provide uh, easier playground access for uh, that campus. Um, the, on the right, there's just a picture of the layout um, for the Royalton campus um, entrance, showing the lobby and bathrooms that will be um, added for that uh, entrance. Uh, next, uh, we'll talk about the shop expansion. So um, as with the increased enrollment, we have increased student demand for tech ed classes. Um, in addition, um, you know, with flexible pathways, these are, um, we, we are putting an emphasis on flexible pathways, which is allowing students to um, learn and um, get proficiencies, get skills from not just standard <coughs> classroom learning. And one of the things that this can include is, is doing hands-on things like projects and whatnot. So we um, you know, are expecting or have increased student demand for the <coughs> resource, the shop. And the current um, shop area is too small um, to really accommodate uh, much more uh, demand. Um, it also limits the size that student projects can be, you know, if somebody wants to make a large project, it needs to take up a large, large <coughs> space, and there's not really storage space and uh, things like that currently. Um, in addition, the welding station is only usable by one student at a time. Um, it's stuck in a corner, and that's something that's popular and, and, and would be used a lot more if we had more capacity. 
that state out of the lab. Um, so we're planning. Uh, what we'd like to do is add a 1,000 square foot addition uh, to the front of the um, existing shop. This would allow us to add more workstations um, and increase the amount of students that can be taught in the class there and also provide more space for additional equipment and um, additional uh, capabilities. Uh, this would be uh, $350,000 um, for all of that. Um, the other major addition that we're looking at um, doing is the performing arts wing. Um, so this would be adding rehearsal space um, for our high school ensembles. Um, the reason it's needed right now is that the current music room is too small for the number of performers that um, are in there currently. Um, it's uh, got a, you know, it's a relatively small space for the number of people who are trying to be in there and the ceilings are low and it doesn't have good acoustics, uh, acoustical treatments, and so it gets very noisy in that space. Um, Band practice is regu has regularly been measured at 110 decibels, which exceeds um, the WHO safe listening levels um, for that. Um, you know, at that noise level, you're only supposed to listen for a few minutes, and you know, that's we're definitely exceeding that. Um, in addition, the noise is really disruptive for the other um, things that need to be or that are using the space around the music uh, program. So um, on the right, you'll see the existing layout, which has the music kind of right in between the art room and the uh, high school or the alternative classroom. Um, that's the place that we have um, for teaching students who are kind of learning how to regulate their behavior and, and to reintegrate them back into a regular classroom. And having a band practice going on with a lot of noise really isn't uh, conducive for that. Um, there's also um, counseling that happens there, or occupational therapy, and all these things are impacted by band practices going on. Um, in addition, uh, that music room is shared between the elementary and the high school, um, and that limits the availability that it is for, there for high schools, so we are limited in what offerings we can provide, but also complements the or complicates the elementary schedule. Um, currently, about half the elementary music classes have to be done in, in, in the classrooms instead of in uh, dedicated music rooms. That involves the elementary music teacher taking a cart with all the stuff that she needs, bringing it to the classroom, unpacking it, getting the you know, kids all set up, and then um, at the end of the time having to pack it back up and bring it somewhere else. Um, in addition to that being difficult for the elementary music teacher, it also makes it so that the teacher um, for that classroom can't use that classroom for their planning time and, um, you know, that they usually have when the kids are elsewhere. So um, having a dedicated elementary music uh, space would really be helpful for, for our elementary school as well. Um, finally, the current music room is in an inconvenient location. Um, it's on the opposite side of the school um, and down, uh, down a level from where our stage and performance area is. So anytime we want to put on a, a performance, um, the students have to lug all of the um, chairs and <coughs> stands and heavy instruments like timpanis and, and bass drums all the way up a flight of stairs all the way across the school to where the performance is happening. Um, also not ideal. Um, you know, music education is an important part of, um, of, of, of schools, and um, you know, there's been many studies that show that music participation boosts test scores and grades in other um, courses like math, English, and science. So, by investing in our music program, um, we are helping out kind of just our general education as well. Um, so on the next slide, what we're proposing is adding an addition to the, on the other side of the elementary gym, that would be a, um, a 3,000 square foot um, addition 
uh, primarily consisting of a large practice space um, for the band and, and high school ensembles. Um, it would also include soundproof practice rooms. Um, we have a really great uh, private lesson program at our school that um, you know all students can access regardless of income, and um, this would help provide pra uh, private spaces where they can uh, give lessons without interfering with you know, other other things going on in the school. Um, there would be an office for the music department and also dedicated storage space for the music and drama programs. Um, and it would also be right next to where our stage area is. It would be a direct connection to the stage, including a lift for heavy equipment. Um, another reason to invest in our music program is that um, in a recent survey, 30% of tuition students that are currently at our school said that our music program was an important um, piece of why they chose our school. So, you know, investing in this program will hopefully help um, more students want to come to our The total cost of this addition would be uh, $3.4 million, essentially. Um, and what we've talked about throughout has been funding it with basically doing a third of the funding through a bond vote a third through the reserve funds that we put away, and a third through um, fundraising. The Music Boosters have been working hard on fundraising and have already secured um, a large $500,000 donation from the Byrne Foundation and are working on getting some more um, large uh, donations as well as, as getting donations from the community. Uh, this is a, a rendering of what the, this would look like. Um, this is if you're driving down Chelsea Street on your way towards the green past the school. Um, and you know, it would be a really attractive, um, attractive uh, front for our school. Um, and so just to, for more orientation, if you look to the right side, that's where the high school entrance is that we were looking at earlier. So this is the other side. Um, well, that would help deal with um, the issues we're having with uh, practice space for our, our, our school. Um, the other thing that we're looking to do is um, better our performance space. Um, so our current performance space is just the stage in the elementary gym, and the current stage is not uh, accessible. There's no lift or ramp access. so. Um, you know, students with mobility issues don't have any ability to get up on that stage. Um, and we should definitely fix that. Um, in addition, you know, it's just a, a gym, and I think there's uh, poor acoustics in there. Um, and I think everybody who's been to performances or just been in that gym knows it's very echoey space and, you know, not ideal for showcasing music or drama productions. Um, a lot of the equipment that's in the stage is outdated and, um, you know, not, not up to um, what, and we wind up renting a lot of equipment as well, which is an added expense for our, our district. So um, what we'd like to do is, is do um, lighting and audio system upgrades for the stage. This would help make it so that we don't have to rent um, equipment every time that we have a performance. Um, we'd also be looking to do um, installation of wallboard um, in the gym to improve the acoustics and make it not as echoey. Um, there'd be an elevator lift added. Um, this would be in that lobby area that we were looking at earlier that would allow um, wheelchair um, access to the stage. And there would also be added ventilation and heat pump heating um, that would help make that a, a help uh, make that a more comfortable space when we have large crowds in it keep it from getting you know, two kilometers cold. Or, you know, most of the time we wind up having, there's a door left open because that area winds up overheating and that, you know, is uh, with, with the added ventilation we will hopefully be able to avoid having to do that. You know, keep people comfortable without having to waste energy by opening that door. Uh, so this should be a better experience for school concerts, you know, drama production. We also have our town meetings in there, and you know, this would help with that. Um, 
and you know, rec basketball games. I can speak from personal experience, it gets really loud in there, and frequently not that fun. So uh, this would help with that as well. Um, we're going to show a video that the uh, music department of boosters put together um, about the stage and um, performing arts wing edition. When I came back to Vermont, the local high schools, none of them had bands. I decided we had to have bands. So I did. I started bands in four of the towns in this area. South Royalton first, and then uh, Randolph, and Bethel, and Rochester. It started with Dick Ellis as a proponent of music uh, he taught in all of the schools in the district probably at that time and he led the town band and I saw at that time even before my children were in school that here was a community that embraced music One, two, three, ready, in. to have like such a supportive music program has like helped a lot of people like gain access to be able to do what they want to do I play the trombone. I'm in concert band, jazz band, chorus band, jazz band, normal band, and theater. Music has always been a big part of my life, and I've been in band and chorus for as long as it's been available. I've been going to concerts at South Royalton since probably 1979, 80, something like that. But as an audience member, it is really hard to keep things under control because there is so much noise reverberating in the room. If our students can have a space that has good acoustics and can understand for themselves what they are producing, that makes a better musician. When I go down to like the band room, like and I see like like the band class, like and I see how many kids there are in there, it's so like it's so like confined that but there's so many kids that want to join band. Our music program is growing and we just need a larger rehearsal space for these students. It's it's pretty chaotic to be honest. Um, so probably about ten percent of class is spent just setting up and breaking down. If, if the setup was there already, students didn't have to do that, that could be a lot more time that students could be accessing their education. We spend all these months like playing this music in the basement room, and the acoustics in there, it's like too much to be playing. Not to mention the fact that we have like damaging amounts of sound hitting our ears when we're trying to rehearse down there. There is very little room to walk around, it's a hazard if there's an emergency. Anybody can walk into the band rehearsal on any day that band is rehearsing and see that it is at max capacity. Well, the Performing Arts Center would be such a great addition, especially to our music department in general. Just, I mean, what we have to do now is, in order to get to a concert, we have to lug all of our instruments, all the percussion, all of everything up the stairs into the small gym, which is basically on the other side of the school than the current band room we're in. I don't think students feel like it's a space where they're being celebrated. I think it's a space that we are making do, <laughs> but I don't think they are walking out and getting the musical experience that they deserve. 25% of our students are involved with the music program here at White River Valley High School. You know, when they built the new gym years ago, there was a lot of pride in our school and athletics, and, you know, the gym came. And like the saying is, you build it, they will come. And I think it's true. When we talk about pride in our school, you know, pride is a sense of belonging. And I think it's important that everyone has that sense of belonging in our school. Providing the Performing Arts Center will be a chance for a lot of our students to have that sense of belonging and, and more pride in our school. There, there's a, um, a good buzz um, with the, the new Wildcat. It's a combination of two schools coming together as one. Um, and out of the gate, the, you know, academics has been a very large focus of that. Uh, we've most recently seen athletics be um, a big focus and now, and now the piece that we're looking 
um, at this point to complete that package is the, the performing arts piece of it. The kids with school choice, they they get to look around, they get to see which schools they want to come to. With a performing arts center, we're gonna our school's gonna look a lot nicer, first of all, and already uh, the music department and the theater department such a massive draw. You know, we kicked around some numbers if, if we just had eight to ten new students that came to our school every year that just wanted to participate in the performing arts piece, that that would pay a bond vote. When we're in a rehearsal and we've been working on something and something just comes together in a way that is really powerful, that they can feel it, I can feel it, there's there's the sense in the room that something just happened. Look what they can produce together and that blended sound is the community of your singers, the community of your instrumentalists and band and orchestra, whatever it is. I want that for all students. That is my goal, is to make sure that there's music in everybody's life. And I think that the kids embrace that. Even though we're the ones like talking about this right now and we're, we're here, I guarantee you if you go and ask anybody else who's part of these programs, part of the band or chorus or theater program, they're going to agree and they're going to say that how useful and helpful the tool of the PAC would be. I've always thought that uh, saying that success breeds success is quite true because uh, with that we somehow got a reputation of being a, a fairly good band. All right, so that was the performing arts center, performing uh, arts wing edition. All right, um, so the, another thing that we're looking at doing, <coughs> moving on. Um, would be upgrading some of the ventilation in our school. So this room doesn't have any active ventilation. Um, neither does the science room in this building. Um, and, and you know, I think there's a lot more awareness about the importance of getting fresh air and exchanging air um, throughout the day. Improving air quality, school air quality has been shown to boost student performance, reduce absenteeism, and, and enhance teacher and staff well-being. So. I think it's important to have um, ventilation in this area. So um, what we're looking to do is provide active ventilation for the library and science rooms. Um, this would include heat pump heating and cooling for um, dehumidification, dehumidification for this space. And um, there would be an energy recovery unit to pull the heat back out of any exhaust that we're, we're doing um, from the added ventilation. Um, and between the heat pump heating and the energy recovery unit, um, the energy costs of added ventilation would be offset by the savings from those um, units. So um, that's really good. Um, and I think the cooling is an added benefit because you know this room in particular, and when it comes towards summertime, it gets pretty warm for the students. So this would make it a lot more comfortable. Um, that would be three hundred fifty thousand dollars for that. So uh, another thing that we're looking to do is do a heating upgrade for this campus. Um, the South Royalton campus oil tank is uh, 26 years old and has a 20, or 20 to 30 year expected lifespan. So it's reaching the end of life. Um, and its current location is blocking the shop expansion. Um, in addition, uh, number two fuel oil, which is what this campus burns, is more expensive and less efficient than other heating options. Um, but the current boiler has 10 years of life left and, and it's not, doesn't make economic sense to replace it at this time. So what we're looking to do with this will be to remove the existing oil tank and convert the um, existing boiler from burning number two fuel oil to propane. Um, as I said, we'd be removing the existing oil tank and installing five 1,000 gallon propane tanks. Um, and we'd also be doing um, building heating and ventilation controls optimization to um, make it so that we're heating and cooling as efficiently as possible. Um, this part of the project would cost $327,000, um, but would save an estimated $13,000 a year in heating costs. It would also reduce our CO2 emissions uh, by about 30%. As well. And um, the final part of the project would be um, stormwater abatement. Um, 
when we did the gym addition, uh, apparently we did not provide an adequate stormwater abatement um, for the amount of space that was added to our campus then. Um, this was discovered and we were given um, a certain amount of time to comply with regulations and so we had until the end of 2025 to do this. Um, so uh, this would cost $327,500 and we would be adding a drainage swale and catch area um, for storm runoff that would ensure compliance with regulations uh, for both the gym addition and also for the added space for the, um, additions, that the additions that we're looking to do uh, now. Um, so we've looked at the cost as we've been going through of each individual part. Um, as I said before, the total cost of all these projects would be $6.8 million. Um, we have $2.2 million in our, our reserve fund, and we'd be looking to use $1.7 million of that for this project. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we maintain a balance in the reserve fund for um, unexpected building costs. Um, you know, that's what it's for. Um, but we've been putting money into that fund um, over the last couple of years in anticipation of doing this work. Um, in addition, there's the fundraising money that the Music Boosters have um, been raising and the grants money. Um, so that's why we're only asking for $3.8 million. Um, now, if you do the math, you'll notice that adding up the 3.8 plus 1.7 plus 1.3 plus 600,000 adds up to $7.4 million. So if all of that funding comes in, we'll actually have more money than we need for this project and we'll be able to um, actually have the final bond be less than what we're requesting. But that gives us wiggle room in case, you know, we don't get all the grants in or the, um, our, uh, we, the fundraising doesn't reach the goal. So um, we should be able to do this um, with the funds that we have. Um, so as far as what it's going to cost for taxpayers, um, as I said before, the project will cost the average homeowner less than $50 a year on average. Um, so the average home value in our, our towns is $200,000. And so, um, you know, you can use that to adjust based on what your home value is. Now, when I say home value, this is the appraised value that's on your tax bill. So if you look at your tax bill, it's got a homestead value, and that's what you would use to determine what this would cost. Um, so if it was $100,000, it'd be $24 average, and uh, $500,000 would be $118 uh, average per year. Um, now this cost will, will change throughout the life of the bond, so when we first start um, the first couple of years, we're paying interest only. So for the $200,000 home, that would only be about um, $30 um, when we're just paying interest only. Um, when we start um, principal payments, that would increase to about $70. And then over the life of the loan, as the interest um, goes away, that would decrease back down to uh, less than $30. Um, but the average cost would be uh, throughout the life of the, the bond would be about $50. Um, and again, for homeowners that are earning uh, less than $128,000, um, they may be eligible for the uh, Vermont property tax credit, which allows people to pay as a um, pay their taxes, uh, property taxes as a percentage of their income as opposed to, you know, from the value of their house. Um, and so that changes how much you wind up having to pay. Um, and for so for a homeowner earning less than $40,000 a year, this is for the home, uh, household income less than $40,000 a year, um, they would pay less than $20 a year on average. Um, you know, it's less than $15, actually, sorry. That part. Um, and you, know, you can use that to calculate if you have a different about what it would cost for you. So one thing I want to say about all those numbers that we've talked about already is that doesn't include any additional revenue from tuition students. So you know, we've talked about how this may be a draw that ha can help us attract students from other communities. But you know, there's no way to guarantee that that would happen. So 
I wanted to make sure everybody had the cost, um, you know, if, if we don't wind up with any additional revenue. But if we do wind up attracting more students, that could really help um, pay for this, um, either just lower the cost or maybe even make it a net tax decrease um, as a result. So um, if we added just one extra tuition student per year, so just one student from the surrounding towns decides to come, um, you know, one incoming freshman each year. Um, you know, each time that a student comes, our current tuition rate is $19,900, so going forward it's going to be more than $20,000 a year each tuition student we get. And if you get somebody in as a high schooler, it's $80,000 over the course of their time here. And if we get them as a middle schooler in seventh grade, then that's $120,000. So it really adds up. If we add one extra tuition st um, student a year, that would be um, $2 million over the life of the loan. So, um, and would decrease the cost for the average home to $29 a year. Um, if we got two, that cost would become $11 per year. And if we got three, we'd see a net tax deal. Um, so, you know, again, we gave all the um, projections without any additional tuition revenue because, you know, it is an affordable project regardless for taxpayers um, and provides a lot of value for our, our students and community um, at a reasonable cost. But, you know, if you want to think about what it might do, then um, we're providing those numbers. Just to look at on the next slide, um, whether it's realistic, whether we could have additional uh, tuition students or not. Um, last year, of all the tuition students, all the high school and middle and high schoolers that are tuitioned from our supervisory union to other schools, we received a total of 42 out of the 406 that are out there. So, um, and if we just look at uh, Chelsea Tunbridge, the first branch district, we received just 11% of those students and just 7.6% of the students from Rochester and Stockbridge. So those are the communities that are right next to ours, and we can definitely be doing better with those. Um, and again, like it doesn't take many um, to pay for a, a bond like this. Um, so yeah, sorry, there's a lot of numbers on there, but you know, like right now we're getting nine out of the 57 students that are there, there are students out there that we can, we can get. That's, that's the point of this. Um, and just to look at what this bond is going to cost compared to other recent bonds, um, both of our, um, both Bethel and Royalton, when we were separate districts, approved bond um, votes. Um, in 2008, we approved the. Jim Bond, which was $3.88 million, so it's very similar to the cost that we're looking at now of $3.8 million. But at that point, we were just one town paying for it, and now we're two towns, and plus there's been an expansion of the tax base since then. So the cost of the taxpayer from the Jim Bond was actually almost four times what were, uh, the cost of this will be to the taxpayer. Um, in 2012, um, Bethel, approved a bond for their um, doing renovations on their campus, which was a $500,000 10-year bond. And this will be only slightly more expensive for uh, taxpayers in that one. And um, the other reason that we know that we can afford this in our budget is that um, the total debt service, you know, we're going to have a few years where we're going to be paying for both the gym and this project, but the total debt service at when we're um, paying the most there um, when principal payments start would still be less than what we paid um, than the tax cost that was paid in 2021. So, you know, we have been able to afford this level of, of bond payments and um, you know, we're, this, this project would be affordable as well. Um, if the project is approved, this would be the timeline of what we're looking at. Um, so right now we're doing our informational meeting. November 5th is the uh, voting day. So um, make sure to either visit your town clerks before then to vote early or visit your polling place, on, which is for Royalton residences in our uh, elementary gym or the Bethel gym for Bethel residents. Um, 
visit your polling place on November 5th to vote. Um, at this point, we wouldn't recommend trying to do an absentee ballot um, since they need to be received um, at the town clerk's office by um, the end of business on November 4th and given uh, the time it takes to have a ma ballot mailed to you and then mail it back, um, it would be safer just to go do it in person. Um, so if the bond passes at that point, we would sign a contract on December 5th to um, proceed with the project. Um, and this would be with our, our overall contractor. And they would then spend the next few months um, finalizing bid packages and whatnot. Um, we will wind up reviewing those on, in April. And then the spring of summer of 2025 is when we would break ground on the project. Um, the secured entrances um, in Bethel uh, will be done in the summer of 2025. And the performing arts wing would be finished by um, <coughs> summer of 2026. we will be doing the fuel switch and propane upgrade in summer 2026, and hopefully have 100% of the project <coughs> complete by fall of 2026. So yeah, this was talking about how to vote. Um, again, at this point, you should either vote in person on November 5th or vote early by visiting uh, the town clerk um, to get a ballot at that time and just give a get back, vote out, and give a get back. Um, if you need the information about contacting the town clerk or anything like that. Oh, the other option is um, you can get in-home ballot delivery in. Mobility challenged. You can have arrange to have justices of the peace come to you with a ballot. You fill it out on, on election day, and then they bring it back, and, and it gets cast. So, if you need in-home ballot delivery, then or know somebody who needs in-home ballot delivery, then um, contact the town clerk to arrange that service. All right. Um, Thank you uh, for coming out and listening and uh, for your continued support of our schools. We do have a website um, which has even more information than what we've gone over here if you want to look into things further. Um, at this point, we'll take questions here. And um, yeah, thank, thanks everybody for coming out. Um, when you ask a question, just say your name so we have it for the minutes. Uh, Brad Salzman. I actually have three questions. Um, first is, how does Bethel um, fit into this? Do they have to vote also? Yes. So this is all done through our school district, which is a combination of Royalton and Bethel. So the whole school district needs to approve it. Um, it's just a majority of vote between all the voters in both towns. So it's not like we have to approve it and Bethel has to approve it. It's just a majority of vote between the two towns. And then once it's approved, it gets paid out of our school district budget, which is, again, paid for by both of our towns. So, uh, it's not like a town law vote where it's just royalty that would be paid for. It's paid for by both towns. And, you know, it's also paid for by the Ed Fund since they help pay for our district budget as well. Okay. Um, second question, uh, you implied that if we got more students, that their tuition would go towards the bond. Well, no, that... it would it would just go towards our district budget. So again, the bond when we're paying the bond, we're paying it out of our district budget. So it basically increases our expenses in our budget by a certain amount. And when we get revenue from tuition students, it offsets those expenses. So it's not specifically paying for the bond; it's just offsetting money in our budget. So any students that we get just lower our taxes or provide us money that we can use to. Okay, I guess I can't wrap my head around how that reduces the bond. Um, it, it doesn't reduce the bond, it offsets the cost of it. So, you know, basically what, what you know, if, if we're, you have $100,000 of expenses and we're bringing in $20,000 of revenue, then that's a net cost of $80,000 that we're paying taxes. These, are, these numbers are way off, it's like <clears throat> millions, but you know, if, if we're bringing in forty thousand dollars, then the net cost becomes sixty thousand. Right? Does that make a little more sense? Probably not. Sure. Describing it very well. <laughs> um, it's just my last question: Is there a plan B 
if the bond does not pass, like um, for next year or whatever? Or is I that? Mean, I think we'll on? have to go back to the drawing board. We don't have any specific plans at this moment. You know, there are certainly things that we're going to have to do. And we do have the building reserve money, which will let us do some of them, but we're certainly not going to be able to do um, a lot of what we'd like to be able to do without the money. So we haven't really discussed specifically what we would wind up doing if it fails. Thank you. Are there any other uh, questions? Sure. Ted Kenyon. Uh, how much more is it going to cost to operate the buildings? Um, so, as far as heating and cooling, heating and um, cooling, lights, and all that other stuff, regular maintenance. Uh, we have a estimate. I don't have an estimate on lights. No. no. I mean, heating and not free. Heating and cooling, we're showing a savings in the project based on upgrading the propane and having increased controls. So that is actually we're projecting a decrease in what it's going to cost us to heat. We estimate right now we have uh, 2.5 custodians on a night. We would, and, and that frankly for this square footage, we're already stretched fairly thin with 2.5. So with the added square footage, we would look to increase that to three nighttime custodians. How many? Three. So three. from 2.5 to three. So an they additional don't find 0.5. A half <laughs> <laughs> I already got half <laughs> It, it is worth, you know, lighting and things like that. Like, right, we did, earlier we did a um, project to um, upgrade the, all the lighting in the schools. And so the LED lighting that we can get in now is really efficient. Is that service coming into the building sufficient to add additional load to it? Yes. Yes. That we have checked. And we would go LED lights again. And these are on timers. So... As you walk through the hallway, some of the lights will be off, and as soon as they see you, then they'll pop on. So, how many more teachers are you going to have to employ? Uh, I don't think we need to add any teachers because we have, you know, we have the teachers now. We, they just are teaching in smaller spaces. You know, we're sharing between the elementary. Right. No additional teachers. No additional teachers. Yeah, the only only staff would be the custom the half time custodian. That's a hundred thousand. Get a half person. No. <laughs> <laughs> We asked many, what was the tariff to look? Just shy of 30,000. Like 26, 27,000. With benefits. Thank you. Good question. Bruce Post. Um, just curious how reappraisal is going to affect the your estimate of $50 per average. So the, the reappraisal shouldn't affect that estimate. Um, the way when the reappraisal happens, um, you know, right now our our houses are our current appraisals are below market rates, right? And so the uh, common level of appraisal is calculated, which gives us a kind of a percentage of what houses are appraised at compared to what they're selling at. And right now, that's um, you know, it, it's basically at like seventy nine percent or something. Um, and that makes it so that we're currently paying taxes, like that increases our, our education tax um, proportionally. So when you're paying, when your assessment currently is $200,000, you're basically paying for a $250,000 value in the house as far as um, you know, how the calculation works out. So when things are reappraised, that CLA will basically be reset or you know, change to reflect the increase in, in appraisal. And that'll decrease the rate that we pay. And that process should be neutral on average across the town. So if your home price increases more than the town average, then that could result in you wind up paying more taxes. But on average across the town, the reappraisal process should be neutral. Because once they do the reappraisal, they recalculate the common level of appraisal and that'll decrease the tax rate that we're paying for the increased value that should be proportional. So I get one one more point. Sure. My my opponent in this race for representative 
has explained that the state is basically responsible for whatever budget we approve. Is that correct? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that. His words were that the towns vote their budget, goes to the state, and the state is responsible to pay that bill. That's, that's accurate. We approve budget. That's so, yeah. And, and, and so we're not real happy when Burlington wants a new school because that's going to get around to increase everybody's taxes. Um, and Woodstock, theirs got voted down, so that's not an issue now. Just curious how this is all going to play well, out. You know, so one thing I would say is that our district has been really responsible on our budget. So if you know we looked in looking at the numbers if you go back to 2017 and look at how budgets have changed since 2017 um the state ed fund has increased 5.8 percent a year that's statewide ed spending has been increasing 5.8 percent a year uh, inflation over that time is around three point i think it was 3.4 um meanwhile our budget over that time for the two towns has increased 2.4 percent so we're actually a percentage point less than inflation over that time so as as opposed to statewide ed spending which is over two percent <coughs> higher so compared to the state we've been really responsible we've been controlling our spending and you know this is a relatively modest project compared so you know we have a 14.3 um, million dollar budget this would be three hundred thousand dollars for you know when we're paying at the most um, for an annual fund. So as a pro as a percentage of our budget, it's relatively small. Um, and given that we've you know, been really responsible with our budgets, you know I think it's reasonable for us to ask to make these improvements. You know, even though there is kind of a spending problem statewide, it hasn't right. been right. as resolved. So it's a pinch. That's what I was kind of right. getting at. Right, but, but and I agree that you know we've been relatively responsible. Yeah. And I was looking budget. at the numbers, and if, if the rest of the state state had grown at our level, the Ed Fund would be spending four hundred thousand dollars or four hundred million dollars less than what they currently are, and we wouldn't have it for that education prices. And am I right that even if Burlington votes to build a new school, the state education fund doesn't have, um, isn't going to be paying for that, right? So, um, so there's, there's, just to be clarified, there's no, right now, there's no state aid for building, but those bond payments do come out of the Ed Fund. Oh, okay. Now, certainly Burlington's gonna cover a majority of the, that money, right, because it's their budget. So what we're discussing is, though, is all those budgets go, all that money goes comes out of the state ed fund and the yield number is set. Remember we have the yield number, the statewide yield. And when folk when when the ed fund needs to generate more money, the yield number goes down, which increases everyone's taxes across the state. They go up. So when the yield number goes down, taxes across the state go up. When the yield number goes up, taxes go down. So yes, in theory, when spending goes up across districts, everyone in the state pays a little more because the only lever the legislature has right now to generate additional revenue is to drop the yield number and really when they do that that's increasing taxes across the state did they go up 14.7 percent last year now they're anticipating another what seven percent how does that affect the average person in this town um well, I mean, well, that was the average across the state. In our district, we did not see a tax increase. We actually saw a tax decrease in the last year. So uh, as far as what will happen next year, I mean, we're going to have to wait and see. But starting. about 70% of my taxes goes to education. Right, and that portion of the, the tax bill, at least the homestead portion, which is what we were, we're responsible for. So we, we can influence the homestead portion of the tax bill. That actually went down. So if I didn't have that, I would be pretty good. I'm currently 73 years old, 83 years old. 
and it comes hard. Sure. I didn't get a big percentage in my Social Security this year. And I sure as heck haven't got a raise. Mm -hmm. yeah, it just comes hard. You got to think about the, the old people, yeah. not just the kids. Old people. Yeah. And I'm not just the only one in this town either. There's a lot of them. Well, I encourage you to look back at your tax bills and look at the homestead education portion, which again is what we're influencing with our school budget. That portion of our tax bill hasn't gone up since the merger. So in the last five years, that portion of the tax bill has either stayed the same or is even a little bit less sometimes. I commend you for keeping it lower, all of you. It's not easy. We have to pay it too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm not so far behind. You were 103. Uh, <laughs> you were 103. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> I feel better at 83. Yeah. Are there any other questions or comments or discussion? Anybody online like to ask a question? Well, if there isn't anything else, then. Um, Oh yeah, go ahead. If, if Bethel voted no and we voted yes, what would happen? Well, it depends on how many people. So again, like we just take the totals from each town and, and it winds up just being a majority vote across the two towns. Mm -hmm. So what we wind up doing is getting the ballots from both towns, bring them to a central location, mix them all together and count mm -hmm. each other. If it's yes, it's yes, if it's no, it's no. So. Have they looked into a GC? What's that? Have they looked into a general contract to see if you can do this project for that kind of money? Um, we've been working with somebody, um, uh, EEI is a company out of, um, where are they? Well, Man yeah, down in the Manchester, New Hampshire area, but they also have an office in Burlington. Oh, we've, we've been working with them. Uh, we did, uh, as I said, we did a, a major project last year with them that we were able to uh, do using the energy savings and environment, and we did um, $2.2 million worth of um, renovations, including the lighting in this campus and an upgrade to convert the Bethel campus from, um, from steam boilers steam boilers to wood chip boilers. And they did a great job on that project and it was completed on time and on budget. And so, you know, the, all these estimates for the cost estimates are, are based on what they've done. Did they look into wood chips on this building here? Um, they didn't because, again, the current boiler has another 10 years of life and, you know, we could replace it, but it wouldn't make economic That's sense. Yeah. So I think part of the idea is that the propane would kind of be a bridge fuel to get us to the point where then we would be looking to do some kind and of... And actually, per gallon of gas, it's cheaper than what the fuel is, isn't it? Yeah. It's not as efficient. But it's the, um, and the recommendation has been, to, uh, <coughs> we did this at Bethel too is that we did wood chip but then we we also had to create a redundancy so we have a propane boiler there as well mm -hmm. uh, especially on bridge time so like we'll start to we'll fire up the wood chip burner <coughs> at, in december mm -hmm. once you know the heating season really kicks in but as far as efficiency using the propane right now is actually more efficient so eventually that would be the idea here mm -hmm. we have propane and then you know as we go along eventually we would look at probably a wood chip boiler What's going to happen when your your heat pump at 20 below zero isn't going to work? What's going to happen then? Well, we'll have the propane. Uh, the whole so building. The new additions are going to be both. The whole propane. building will be heated by propane. Even on your additions, it's going to be propane. Yes. Yep. But the heat pump is not zero. Heat. Now. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you. All right. Would uh, people like to go? Walk around the building and take a look at some of these areas. So for us to send a kid there, it's a lot of money. And that money could be saved by keeping kids here and doing the actual work here. Yeah, and also, you know, Randolph's really, really good for a certain group of kids. Um, other kids will benefit a lot from staying here, being able to do their academics, as well as getting hands-on experience. You know, if they want to go to management, own their own businesses, that kind of thing, they still need math skills, science skills, and that kind of thing. Um, you know, the trades are really good for funneling people into working directly into the trades, but 
I, you know, I came out of high school where they, you, we had a strong chat program and really strong academics, and that's kind of what I'm a believer in. So I try to encourage kids to make sure that they do get the academics done. Um, Hartford's good because they're only there half day, right? Yeah. So it's a little bit less expensive experience, um, but they still can get some trade school experience there as well as the academics from Premier. So. Um, we need the trades. Yeah, we should. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and it's the same as the music. It, it's part of creating a well-rounded individual. So even if a kid's coming here for academics, having a kid that was able to have shot as an elective mm. is a really good thing. That somebody got a chance to, to work a miter saw right. well, in, in high school with, without having to commit to a full shop program as their whole high school curriculum. Their ability to be able to do this is important to creating a well-rounded individual. Plus, they also, I tell the kids that the easiest way to make $100 an hour when you get out of school is to be able to fix your own car. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or a chainsaw, even, okay. if you can get it done. Yeah. You know what's uh, amazing is how many kids really would love to work on their cars, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's why there's three of them out here right now, but there could be ten easily, but there's just, Will has to say, nope, you can't bring it down, because we just don't have space for them to work on it, and it's getting a little cold out there, so. Well, like Chop it up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, we'd like to have When I got out of high school, I went to Rutland two nights a week for plumbing so oh, for nice. five years. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that was on my nipple. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. Like I, I, I sit in the corner over there and watch class, and I'm like, wow, if we ever had a fire drill right now, it would just be getting out of here. So. And it's not, it's not an overestimation that the noise level is detrimental to the children's hearing when they crank it up in here. You hear them go in their car, crank it yeah. up. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I I, I you hear them coming if you were on the other side of that wall. Yeah. Yeah. If you were on the outside of this building on the other side of that wall a little bit, and they did, you'd hear it just fine. You'd be able to tell me the song they were playing just fine. And they have to sit in here and have it uh, hit their eardrums. They really shouldn't. I wouldn't want to be the kid sitting in front of that trombone section. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's also worth noting that the town band starts practices in the spring in here for their summer concerts. Wow. So it's, yeah. it's well, used. They're, they're using the universal universal area area too, so. yeah. Yeah. How much larger will the new one be? Oh. I mean, I think it'll be basically like three times the size. Right? That way they are a different location. Uh, it's going to be over by the, on the other side of the gym. Yeah, so, yeah, so where the, the new gym is, it's going to be like uh, straight with that. Mm -hmm. out why don't we, um, and access, it. how will the access be to that? Well, there'll be a new entrance for yeah. the high school kids, and then there's a hallway that goes into it, mm -hmm. and also from entering it from the front as well. Mm -hmm. So there's two entrances. Secured entrance. Huh? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And that's like that one entrance where you see our high school kids come in. I, I'm worried. Uh, I spend my mornings down there because that door's wide open, and kids yeah. are just coming and going, and it's really a safety hazard, right? Mm -hmm. You could any. Anybody could come through there because our kids are so nice. So, hey, welcome! You know? And it's that one door, and we don't have the buzz in at that door like we do at the other entrance. And this is where all of our high school kids come because they all park out there. So. When I was in school, you had your gun in your truck. Yeah, you know, I don't know. The principal had it, no, so you could use the gun. No, you stay right there, truck. No, yeah, 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 no worries. Yeah. It has changed. It has. Not yeah. Yet, though. Yeah. So do we want yeah, to show, show up to yeah. that back entrance? Okay. Say, this area would still be used for the elementary music program, but there's a rehearsal space there and an office space here, and we'd be repurposing those to use them for other purposes. Like those would get to be used for um, our interventionists or uh, occupational therapists. You know, there's a lot of needs, and, and there's times when people are just having to do things in the hall because we don't have a dedicated space available for them. And this would free up some space for our elementary programs for doing those sorts of things. How many square feet? I think the re rehearsal space is 3,000, but then there's the corridor and the entrance addition. So, you know, it's probably like 40, 3,500 or something like that, 45, 5,000, something like that.
Our main entrance that we're talking about for our high school right here, and as you can tell, it's single, it's locked normally, but kids will wait for the vocational bus here, and they'll let kids in. And at, at the parking's right there, you come across our covered bridge. And just saying, we had the only covered bridge in the state of Vermont for our students, which is pretty nice. It's the only covered bridge in Royalty. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um, so we're pretty proud of that, actually. Um, but they come across, instead of going all the way around to the front, they use this entrance here. And it's really not a safe entrance um, as far as letting people in and out. And it's just, you know, it doesn't look real good. I always say you're coming at the back of a factory. You know, it's your back door and this is where we come. So I think by having a few entrance, not only would it be safe, but there'd be a lot of pride in our school. Is this the original part of the school right here? Yes. I thought about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't drive right around. Yeah. 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 So, so there, be, and there will be a walk breezeway that goes to the Performing Arts Center, right. so you don't have to go through the gym to get to it. So yeah, what we'd be changing would be, <coughs> right now there's um, this hallway plus this room over here, which is the current athletic director's office. This wall would be removed to kind of open up the space and make it um, a, a lobby area. So I'm sure people have been here for performances or other things where we wind up having like the boosters with their table set up right in the middle of the hallway. And there's not really a good space for doing that sort of stuff. And having a lobby where we can have, you know, the boosters have their um, big sale table or whatever else um, available for that. And also for the students who are waiting for whatever buses they're going to or, um, you know, like when we're doing rec basketball, there's always a bunch of people just hanging out in this hall, waiting for their time for the gym. So having a space where that will be available would be a big help. There will also be two additional ADA bathrooms in addition to the two existing ones already. That's where will be added. Um, and then there will be the lift that goes directly onto the stage there. When you say a breezeway, would that be heated or just? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so what would be happening on this side would be it would be bumping out about eight feet, I think, that way. Um, and there would be kind of two double doors here um, with the divider between them. So the main, this side would be kind of what's used for the vestibule entrance. And then students who wanted to go to the performing arts wing would be able to go through the second set of double doors um, through the... Um, corridor, which is basically on the back side of the gym, over to the far side of the gym where the performing arts practice rooms would be um, in the practice area. Um, yeah, that would make it so that they could access that area where we have the secure vestibule, you know, is locked and, you know, provides, makes it so that they don't have to leave kind of a secure area to access that far side. Um, do people want to go look at the stage, I guess? Uh, and then we can go sure. look at that area. We kind of can hear how echoey this area is. And you know, when we're having concerts and performances in here, this is not ideal acoustics for what you would like to hear. So you know, I think getting some treatment in this area to make it more acoustically appropriate for holding concerts would be definitely a benefit. Um, yeah, I don't know, is there things on the stage to look at, or... I, I, I can I can hear you better in here than I could in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Speaking really up, hard that when you're here for a performance, for a play, I've got good ears. I, I, I have really good hearing, and I still, I'm sitting there like, huh, huh, what are they saying? It's really hard. Yeah. It doesn't get better <laughs> <laughs> to do a top-notch job, we would have some sort of an auditorium so you could actually see the performances. Yeah. Coming for elementary concerts, if you're not in the front row, you're stuck in the back, basically you just sit and close your eyes and listen because you can't see anything. But if we can at least get, the, get it so you can hear them better, that's at least a step a in the right direction. It's, it's always, always been, been a problem. problem. Always. always. Even in the school that I taught in, which was a new school, yeah. it was still a flat stage. And it was still the same thing. It would get to the point where I tell the principal, either my group sits up front or I'm not coming. <laughs> and guess what? He let me sit up front. 
may, may have had something to do with being the old bag. <laughs> because I was in bad behavior. Are you getting ready for Midsummer Snipe, doing you? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll take a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Got some work to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think we'd also be, you know, there's kind of a, uh, what do you call it, like the catwalk or whatever. Right, but that's all going to be redone. Yeah, that's all going to be redone. You know, right now, there were some real safety concerns with how they were done, so there's already <laughs> been a little fixes to them, but they really need more work on that. Um, we'd be looking to get lighting and audio equipment in here. For performances, we wind up having to rent that each time, and that really adds up when we're doing multiple performances a year. Um, so that would be a cost savings. Um, I think you're going to do the stage too. The and then the acoustics will be out there. Yeah, yeah. the sound system. Yeah. Some different seating and some different riser stuff too. Mm -hmm. I think they discussed. Good. Um, so the rehearsal space would go just on the other side of that wall. Um, it would be, uh, yeah, I didn't really, I think it's about 40 feet wide, so I'm not exactly, probably like. <laughs> this maybe. I need to get a tape measure to figure out exactly how wide that would be. Um, it would provide a significantly larger space than what we just saw downstairs. Um, you know, having it right next to this performance space would be really helpful. Um, it is also large enough that we could use it for small performances. You know, like, and it, you guys have done the. National Honor Society. National yeah, Honor Society type smaller things concerts, or yeah. smaller the cafe things yeah. might be able to be. It'll hold 75 is what they're estimating. Yeah. 75 people like mm -hmm. that for an audience. Standing up. Mm -hmm. No, with seats <laughs> and stuff. But yeah, they, they expect that we could hold events in there around 75 if we thought we have an audience around 75. So it could also, again, be a good meeting place as well. So one of the things we've had to navigate around with um, this project was making sure that the, all the, the existing areas still complied to fire codes for, you know, like when we have large groups in here, we need to make sure we have exits for everybody. Um, so the exit there that currently is going directly out of the building, that'll become a hallway that um, is an exit for people to go out from this area out to the far side of where the performing arts room will be. Um, that door in the corner is currently gym storage, so that would still be, be gym storage, and there'd be an additional storage room on the far side of that for the music area. Um, you know, I think the space would be a nice high ceiling space as well. I mean, one of the things you might have noticed down in the basement area is that you know it's a pretty low ceiling for that, for having a band particularly, and you know when you are, have all those instruments playing and all that music reverberating around, like having a big open space really makes a difference. And so this would be a nice, large, high ceiling area. Would it be as as tall as this, or I, mean, I think it's basically that same height that's going across. So that's what I've seen. Yes. Yeah. So I think it'd be a really great addition to our school and really um, enhance what we're able to offer here. So. A couple things I might add is I was on the school board for 13 years, and that was a few years back now, so I probably joined the board about 20 years ago. We were talking about some of the same stuff, like the lights. We've been bleeding money with lights forever. And, you know, do you got to... So at some point you've got to bite the bullet. You have to say we have to do this. The second thing I'll say is, is if you look at some of our neighboring towns, Randolph, Woodstock, who haven't put money into their buildings the way we've been doing it over the years, we, we have done additions, we've fixed things, we've went back to the old stuff, we've replaced windows. We've been really good about taking care of this building. Um, they're looking at big bucks. What, Rand Woodstock was looking at 90 million or something like that? Yeah. Randolph. I think Randall's looking at like 60 million just to fix the building, not even to replace it. They, they, I mean, they got band-aids on the place. You know, it's 
we, we're in good shape here. Um, and if we keep investing in our infrastructure, it'll stay in good shape. If we walk away, it will be like them. So. A stitch in time saves nine. So some of this is stitches. Some of this is expansion. Some of this is stitches. We just need to do this stuff. What does that mean? That's one of the things I've noticed being here in this building. I taught 30 years in Woodstock. And hmm. the deferred maintenance. Now they, they are dealing with all of the mold and the heating system that had Band-Aids on it for the past 30 years and the leaky roof that was leaking the whole time I taught there. And so now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I can just see the difference when I come into this building. This building just sparkles. You can tell that people have cared about it and maintained it really well. Um, thank you for your years on the board that helped do that. Well, I think uh, that's about all we have for tonight, unless there's any other questions people have. Um, you can call it a night. You, know, we're, you can certainly contact any of us board members. We're happy to answer questions at any time. Um, and you know, I hope people make a plan and get out and vote. Make sure as many people get a chance to weigh in on this as possible. What is the biggest thing on the priority list? <coughs> See, if you had to steal down. What's the biggest thing on the priority list you really got to well, do? Well, I mean, we're required to do the storm water. Yeah, that's, so that's number one. That's happening. Um, again, I, I don't feel comfortable talking about this because we haven't talked about it as a board, so this is just mm -hmm. be um, kind of spattering. You know, I think all of it is really mm. important. You know, I think the music wing, it's more expensive, and we certainly couldn't do that without going to a bond, but it's really important. And mm. you know, I think it would provide a lot of benefits. So you know, I can pretty easily say that we wouldn't be able to do that without the bond, but you know. The costs won't get any cheaper. Right, exactly. <laughs> they never do. Yeah. And, and the fact that by doing it all together, actually saves money. Like if we invested in just that entrance over there and did a whole new entrance, and then a couple years down the road, we're, we're able to do the performing arts piece, well, you know, that was kind of wasted money. <laughs> yeah. Bring me out of retirement. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a good plumber here. <laughs>